Hey, hey. Hey, what's up, YouTubians? Gary here with VW Jawbreaker. Today, we're gonna to talk about four simple things to help prevent fires in your classic Volkswagen. That's right. Simple, easy steps today. So you know what? Let's get right to it. All right, so first tip. We're gonna use the engine here on the workbench, my spare engine as an example engine. If you're running a single carburetor, stock setup, doesn't matter really what size engine you're running, number one thing is fuel line. Here is the braided fuel line. That's what uh, a lot of the Volkswagen people like to run. It's the cloth braided fuel line. It actually works kind of like Chinese fingers. Makes it really difficult to get things off. The other thing you can use is regular fuel line. Now you can get this at your auto parts store, any of the local auto parts stores, but let me recommend that you get the fuel injection line, not the regular line. The reason being is the fuel injection line stands up to the ethanol a lot better than a standard fuel line. Uh, I'm gonna get some crap for this, I'm sure. Everybody's gonna say, don't run ethanol, run ethanol free gas. Well, you know what, in my car and Jawbreaker, I can't run ethanol free gas. I need the 93 premium and near me, I cannot get ethanol free premium fuel. I can only get, I think it's 87 octane ethanol free fuel, which doesn't cut it in mind with the compression ratio and the engine build that I have. So I need to run the ethanol. With your fuel line, you need to make sure that you check on your lines and replace them about every year or two. A cracked line is gonna cause gas to leak down, get on your engine, and cause a fire. What's this about? Fire prevention. That brings me to point number two. Point number two. Let's zoom this down a little bit, pivot. Point number two, normally your fuel pump would go right here. Do not put your fuel filter right here going to your carburetor, okay? You never want your fuel, fuel filter on the pressure side of your line, okay? You want it coming in. If you want to put it down here somewhere, fine. Best place for it is on the back side of the engine in between the transmission and the firewall where the engine starts. Somewhere in that range is where you want it. Another good option would be underneath the fuel tank in the front. You usually have a little nipple that comes down and then the, I don't know, the main metal fuel line that runs through the tunnel. Usually there's a loop of fuel line there. You can run it there. It's a little bit more difficult to get to versus just underneath the car right there by the transmission. That's where I like to run mine. I never run mine in the engine compartment and I never ever run it on the pressure side of the fuel pump. That's where these things will explode, prone to leaks, the whole nine yards, okay? But since we're here, let's go ahead and get to number three. Number three on this setup is also pretty important. Pardon me, pardon me. These nipples on these carburetors, whether it's the Solex, Bristol, whatever, these nipples are pressed in, they're not threaded in, okay? So if you have your fuel filter hanging here, it's gonna sit there and put strain on this and eventually that nipple can just pop out. What's that gonna do? That's gonna pump fuel like crazy all over your engine and cause a fire. Simple fix, that way you don't have to worry about it, is back this screw out a little bit on your hose clamp, run a piece of safety wire around this, around this screw, tighten the screw back down and then twist that together to make sure this stays in. I hope that makes sense. All right, guys, and number four on the list is a fire extinguisher. You always want to make sure you're ready. I carry a five pound ABC rated fire extinguisher. I know this is kind of large. I know this is kind of overkill. Now you could get the regular one from anywhere, which is, you know, a little smaller to about the same size and it's white. It's actually meant for the Marine. Okay, you can run one of those in your car as well. You just want to make sure it's mounted somewhere accessible, okay? Whether it be in the front footwell of the passenger side, somewhere along the center tunnel, just in the back seat, somewhere easily accessible that you can reach around, grab it, and use it. Whether it's on your vehicle or somebody else's vehicle, you never know, okay? 
Fire extinguisher is very important. Make sure you have a quality extinguisher and that it's mounted in a safe, easy, accessible location. Or on top of the fire extinguisher, you can also run a blaze cut. Blaze cut is one of the ones that I recommend. I don't get sponsored by anything, I just know. I'll put a picture right here. That blaze cut, as you saw, is a circle. And it's filled with the same material that's inside a fire extinguisher. So it mounts in your deck lid that senses the fire, poof, automatically extinguishes for you. Now it still doesn't hurt to go ahead and have a fire extinguisher on hand. I'm sure those blaze cuts work well. I've seen videos. I know a couple people that had, they've actually come in handy and have prevented that fire or at least put it out, I should say. But having still a fire extinguisher, even though you have a blaze cut, still a good idea. So I hope this was helpful. I hope you follow these four tips. They're simple, easy things, guys, that doesn't really take that much time and really doesn't cost anything. Make sure you replace your fuel lines. Don't ever put a fuel filter on the pressure side of the system. Okay? Carry a good extinguisher with you, whether it's an extinguisher, blaze cut, or preferably both. And also, make sure you change your fuel lines regularly. All of them. Every bit of it. Anyway, Kevin in Australia, I hope you found this useful. Let me know what you think. Comment below. Let me know what you use. I'm always interested and in, uh, open to other ideas. For the ones that have just subscribed, I appreciate it. I hope you find this information useful. Let me know what you think. Anyway, till the next time, you guys be good.